Sunday Sew Mystery fam. We are back with another Sunday So What, where we break down and recap the message from this morning, which came from our awesome church planter, Pastor mm -hmm. Charles. Mm -hmm. um, and so before we get into that, though, we want to start with our fun question of the day. <laughs> um, and so our fun question for our interns today is, what is your favorite TV show? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Favorite? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I'll start off today. Okay. River Monsters with Jeremy <laughs> Wade. I love it. Cracks me up. Good guy. Where can they Where can they find this show? Um, it is on Animal Planet. He's got a couple other like fishing shows like that. I watch it on Hulu personally. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, mine is probably Fixer Upper. I need, a, I need a daily dose of that ship laugh in my life every day, so it's really cool to yeah, see a different joke going at it. So. Uh, mine is Parks and Rec. I watched it through like four times, and I love Leslie and Anne and Ben and all of them. <laughs> Wait, so question. Office? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Uh, hands down. Right. Sorry to disagree. They're both sexual now. <laughs> uh, my favorite TV show would probably be Dancing with the Stars. Mm. <laughs> Love Dancing with the Stars. That's, that's, a good one. That one's so fun. that's so fun. That's right, y'all. So go check out our interns' favorite TV shows, man. Park and Rec. They watch some interesting TV shows. So <laughs> TV, man. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, y'all, so we have been in a sermon series called God and Sinner and Reconciled, um, where Charles has been talking about what it looks like to have the multi-ethnic church. Mm -hmm. um, and so last week he talked about the fact that the gospel is what leads to reconciliation and the fact that until our hearts are changed by the gospel, we can't experience the full reconciliation that God has given us mm -hmm. um, because it's nothing we do. It's what Christ has already done for us that leads to reconciliation, which was mm -hmm. so good and super cool. Um, and so we kind of continue that discussion today. Um, and so our first, my first thing we're going to do is read Ephesians 2. Um, so Kristen's going to read that for us and then we'll get into our questions. Yeah. So we're going to be in Ephesians 2 verses 14 through 17 today. And that says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the metal wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, <laughs> that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the, there it is again, enmity. And he came and preached peace to you, who were afar off, and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah. So good. Um, so my first question to you guys is, what was your main takeaway from today's message? I really liked how Charles was talking about how we um, need to be intentional with our relationships um, with people in the church because oftentimes it's not just going to happen on its own. We need to pursue them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I just really like kind of he talked about how the church is a family, right? And he said basically that a family is the model of the church. But I really like how he said like it's an ever-growing like family an ever-growing church and so like he even brought it back to like back in the romans and like just to see how the church is like still contending and is still growing to this day i think that's super cool that it's still active and alive mm -hmm. so definitely mm -hmm. um my main thing i didn't know that romans back then would adopt men and i thought that was super interesting they would adopt them to like take over their property and their and their like riches and stuff like that and i think it's super cool how god adopts us as like heirs to his glory and his throne and so i think that's such an honor that god does that for us you know mm -hmm. so that's my mind so for me i'd say my takeaway would be i love this whole like th this subject that we're going over and how pastor charles tied it up today with saying that the church is a family of people from all walks of life. So the church is not specific to one group of people or this group of people. It's for everybody. So the church is all inclusive and it's open to everybody. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so good. Um, so I think we can all testify to the fact that family can be hard sometimes, yeah. for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so how is the family of God different? 
That's a good question. And I think even in church, you will find hard people. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get away from that going to church. But I think what makes the church different than just your normal family is we have God and God gives us this grace upon grace. And so like, even if you might be upset with that person, you can show them grace because you know God has like lavish grace on you. And mm -hmm. so I think that's what makes it different is we, we can love on others in a way that normal people don't. So yeah. Uh, so for me, I think the family of God is just different for the fact that like uh, here on earth, we don't really get to pick our family, like our blood family. We're born into mm -hmm. where we're born. We don't get to change that. Mm -hmm. But through God, God has adopted us mm -hmm. into his family and we become part of this enormous family that will be with forever in heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see that just God can change all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. 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 Um, so right now that we are part of this family, when we accept Christ, like what responsibilities do we have as part of being God in God's family? Yeah, I would say, um, loving them, but loving them for who they are, like, um, mistakes and all and baggage that they're carrying. Um, and that doesn't mean just like loving them and when you're in front of them, just being nice to them. But like when you're away from them, like actually generally praying for them because you love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say like that's so true and even like Charles kind of talked about two points like towards the end of his sermon and he said one of them was being intentional with forming new relationships and so we've kind of talked about that before but it really does make such a big difference of you actively like being intentional and using that word to go out and like make those relationships and making an effort to love them um, and then he said to be a missionary in a multi-ethnic community and so that means looking around you and seeing like are you really like trying to make those relationships with people maybe who are not in your circle or who maybe are not in your like friend group at school or your soccer team but really like looking around and seeing maybe if God's bringing different people in your life that aren't exactly like you that you could really you know make a difference and, and help mm -hmm. them with that too so yeah. that's so cool yeah no guys awesome that was so good um and yeah so one of the funny things I, I was telling my 10th grade girls this last year um in our small group right was like the church is like a dysfunctional family, but I always like to say we put the fun in dysfunctional, you know what I mean? And so like none of us are perfect. We are a body full of broken, imperfect people, but we're all saved by the same, the blood of Christ, which is so cool. Um, and I always like to think about the fact it's cool that even with you guys, like I get to, I get to look forward to a forever and eternity with them. And same with you guys when you come to know Christ. So that's so cool. But we do want to challenge you, right? Like. Look at your social circles, look at your friends, yeah. um, and really evaluate, like, am I surrounded by people from all different walks of life? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it could be scary to go out of our comfort zone and go out of what we're used to, but, like, that's what God's called us to because that's how the gospel gets spread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then be intentional about seeking diversity in your life, whether that's at school, at church, um, it's maybe on your sports teams, and choir, and theater, whatever that is. Um, there's so many opportunities that God presents for us to just reach people from all different walks of life, which is super cool. Um, but before we go, um, just a couple of announcements. First, this Wednesday, live stream. Tune in, y'all. Invite a friend to watch it with you on YouTube. Um, we have so much fun, and we'd love for y'all to be there for sure. Um, also, we have D groups this Thursday, so that's an opportunity for you to hang out with these guys who are super cool. Um, and we just chill outside, eat lunch, talk about Jesus, talk about life. It's a good time. So bring a lunch, bring a lawn chair, and come hang out with us from 12 to 2 on Thursday. Um, and then the big one, make it matter. Ooh, that is our what's up. Come on, yeah. come. It's so good, y'all. That is our big event for the summer for all of student ministry. So that'll be August 1st from 6 to 10. Y'all, we're working on getting a band, a speaker, a snow cone machine. I mean, all sorts of fun things, knocker, soccer. So you want to mm -hmm. be there. It'll be so much fun. Um, so check out our Next Gen event page for registration, as well as our social media for registration and all that information. We're so pumped. You want to be there. Registrate. It's like nothing we've done before mm -hmm. for our youth. So yeah. we're so pumped about that, but we love you guys. We miss you. Um, and we can't wait to see you guys for our church's opening Woo! next Sunday. So we'll see y'all there, but we love you and we'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.